needs consisting of parents and their children considered as a group whether dwelling together or not so there are some uh, 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 let me say uh, modern definition of families because when you look at the uh, a modern classification of families we have over 10 or over 12 or over 15 classification or, uh, of families and they have particular definition we have families who have just decided to stay together and they do not have or they, they do not experience some rights which, which we do call common in a family setup or in a marriage setup so when you look at different aspects or different classification of families they have maybe more or less uh, more or less slight deviation in the total meaning but they have some basic concepts that we are talking about here or we have summarized in this three de definition so it's a basic social unit consisting of parents and their children considered as a group whether dwelling together or not <clears throat> so at times you might find parents are not there but these there are children who are living together so the definition number two is social unit consisting of one or more adults uh, together with their children they care for. The last definition, and I believe you are now seeing how we are building together. Any group of person closely related by blood or as parents, children, uncles, aunts, and cousins. So you realize that this one, the first definition brings in the aspect of a group or a social unit it consists of parents, people who are related by either blood, <clears throat> people who are related or considered as a group either by adoption and they are living together, sharing some responsibilities. So I believe you can see how we, we, uh, 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 we have a very comprehensive definition of a family, such that there are some terms that you need not or when you're looking at a, a, a client or a patient, you look at them in the terms of they have people who they share a common social unit. I believe we are opening up our minds and we're seeing the whole thing, not only looking at uh, maybe, maybe you're talking about or maybe you're looking at youths. You want to reach to a youth. You reach to them because one of the aspects, you see WHO defines health as uh, it's a complete state listen to the following information. It's a complete state of physical, social, uh, emotional well-being, and not necessarily the mere absence of a disease. Such that when you are reaching to a youth who is maybe a drug addict, you're not only looking at this youth as an individual, but you're looking at them as they belong to a certain social unit. And in the social unit that they are in, they are either related with those people either by adoption or by blood. Is someone getting it? I don't know if you, you're getting the point. Yes. Okay, thank you so much. So family also, another definition that maybe we can add to whatever we have is the, the other three summarized together is enduring relationship, whether biological, Man biological, which we talk of adoption, chosen or substantial, connecting a child, a youth, a parent, a caregiver through culture, tradition, shared experiences, emotional commitment, and mutual support. So it's just the three and those that you gave me that uh, are, 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 are uh, summarized in this slide. I don't know if someone has a question before we go on. You can either unmute you speak. I always like to listening uh, to people speak. Or if you are uh, shy, you can uh, text in the chat box. I'll read it. Oh, thank you. I didn't say this one. Agada Tonui. It's a family is the basic unit of a society that consists of persons related by blood, marriage, or adoption. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. It's, it's, it's actually correct. So anybody or someone has a question on maybe the definition of a family before we go to some of the responsibilities that maybe we, 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 we have to burden the family with or that 
you as 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 an advocate, you as an ad, uh, activist, you as a watch uh, uh, watch person or a watchman or watch woman, in 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 terms of maintaining these social rights, what you need to consider, because we are not only looking at a person in the aspect of an individual, but you're looking at them as the care uh, uh, is family-wise or it's centered in the family. So a question or something. <clears throat> Question, maybe let me give you like uh, um, like one minute. Question or 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 or, or an addition or or or, or uh, a suggestion or something. Okay, similarly, there is none. I believe now we can continue and. The next thing that you're going to oh, thank you for the definition of open to now. Okay, thank you so much, Mata Kunde. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. I appreciate your responses. I'm much humbled to see them and get them. You see, if it's interactive, at least I am feeling I'm talking to people and we are learning all together. So as a family, let me let me let me take it back. Uh, uh, and because we all belong. We all belong to a family, I believe. We all belong to a certain family. Now, let me take it back to we or I viewing myself, I'm in a family. What is my responsibility as an activist who belongs to a family? Or basically, as a social unit, what is the responsibility that a family has to individual members or to members within the same family? Let me just take it back there. So maybe let me see the responses. What, what do you think? What, what is the function of a family? Uh, uh, a family as a unit. Look at it, a family as a unit, and look at individuals as something different. So what is what do you think is the function of the family to maybe individuals or people living within the family? Let me see responses. You can either mute or you can uh, arrive. If you didn't get the question, you can tell me to pardon. The first responsibility is that the family should be caring for their children. Okay, thank, thank you so much. Yes, caring within, for the children. Uh -huh. Routinely taking care of household tasks like cleaning, mm -hmm. washing. Mm -hmm. and thank you so much. Supervising the younger people. Oh, thank you so much. Thank you so much. What's your name, please? Sheila, nutritionist. Sheila, thank you so much. So Jacqueline Wong says, give sense of belonging. Thank you so much. Yes, it gives sense of belonging. Love and provide basic needs. And by the way, love, love is Abu Bakr. Thank you so much. Love is, is, is something that is very central. Because without love, the family is inhabitable. It's, 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 the environment is so hostile. So love and provide basic needs. So maybe let us look at uh, 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 let us let us let us look at it. Uh, thank you so much for your responses and see it in a deeper perspective. <clears throat> a deeper perspective that uh, uh, socialized children. Yes, let me. Okay. Oh, nice. So health tasks. So yes, health task of the family. So uh, let me also drive your attention to, this is basically more of nothing, but I'm going to explain it. I'm going to explain it uh, and I'm going to make it more simpler. Let me draw your attention now from how you're viewing it from a social, uh, 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 more of the social responsibilities uh, 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 or more of, uh, uh -huh. Yes, social responsibility to health wise for the health task because whatever we are talking about affects the family's health either positively or negatively. So the health task of the family, health task, what we mean here is what the, 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 the family is obliged to do to maintain the optimum health status or the optimum well-being 
of the member. So the number one thing is recognizing interruptions for our healthy development. Now let me explain that point. Because in a family, what we can also have is stress. Let me give you a scenario. We all, I said earlier on that we all belong to families. Now what happens is when you have a, a maybe you, you belong to families, there are things that can affect the family. We have, the family can undergo what we call stress or can undergo what we call crisis. So stress can lead to a crisis. So the moment there seems to erupt or to, uh, 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 there seems to erupt a stress level that can disrupt. Family stress is a little bit from the stress we know that can disrupt the normal. And such kind of stresses might be that maybe this is a guy who the family is really struggling to pay for school fees in maybe the university or maybe colleges or maybe level uh, training institutes. And he gets into a drug. So you see one of the one, one of the effects is that it will create a stress level within the family. Now what happens when it does this or when this one happens is that there will be interruptions. So you realize because they will be, maybe the parents are old age and they have started experiencing those, those old age symptoms. They have, uh, and they have now to respond to this child of theirs so that at least they maintain that equilibrium. So recognizing interruptions of a healthy development. This healthy and a healthy development can either occur to the father, the mother, or other siblings. Let me also bring it down. Maybe this mother has delivered, <coughs> we've been talking of, of, of maternal health, has delivered maybe to a cesarean section. And the cesarean section side of the, the, the wound is not healing. Now she needs to go to theater for a second time. You see such kind of, of things that can happen. So those are the, the disruptions or the interruptions that can occur in the family. Such that if we are managing this woman within the maternity section, or when we are managing this guy, we manage them not as an individual, but we also look at the equilibrium that is created in the family. We pick the family as our client. Did, did, I believe we understood that point. <clears throat> yes, I hope we understood it. So making decisions for seeking health care. So this one maybe will happen when, when, when uh, we, we have maybe a, a, a lack of information as one of, it, it's one of the things that really uh, hinder uh, 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 healthcare because we realize that one, one, one of the risk factors for increased maternal mortality rate is lack of information. So making decisions for seeking healthcare, the family now decides that maybe this woman is, uh, maybe she's 18 weeks or because a woman generally or basically has to go to click the first session at 16 weeks. Now she doesn't know, this is a first time mother. She doesn't know this and uh, 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 she comes late. So you see what happens is we make her know and also the family can also help in making or in, in establishing some basic principles in uh, 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 at least making decisions or, or, or improving the health. So dealing with health crises such as severe illness, death, hospitalization, providing nursing care to sick independent mother, uh, members of the family, maintaining a healthy home environment, clean, safe from hazards like fire, accident, falls, and, and the rest. And falls are very risky for pregnant women. So it's, 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 it's basically, I believe now we are, we are getting the bigger picture of not only an individual are we looking at, but also, but also a, a, a family. And we are going to see maybe forward how now we need to be maintaining or this uh, a surveillance or stewardship in promoting maternal and uh, child health and also maybe because I believe the DYI is about youth and, 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 and youth development and youth empowerment, we see things the family in, in, in a family area. And you see the family is the basic social unit of a community or a society. So when we influence the family positively, we shall have influenced the whole community positively. And the, 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 the message or, or, or the, 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 the things that we struggle with so much 
in handling drug abuse and pregnancies, what, 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 we shall at least uh, uh, handle them in a way. So there are some basic principles of family health care, and these principles, they go hand in hand. Because the moment you want to look or do you want to understand the concept of the family in, in this stewardship uh, thing, you have to maintain some basic or you have to operate under certain uh, rules and regulations. So the first one is establish professional relationship. You see, basically in uh, I'm a student nurse, we are always told that, especially for invasive, invasive are procedures that go inside a uh, 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 human body, invasive procedures, uh, and more of, uh, uh, more of those ones that will always try to examine those areas we got so much. I believe we all know them. You are told not to, operate or not to help or not to uh, service someone you know or not to uh, uh, work with someone uh, a relative of yours or your mother or your father under ethics because they 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 they, they, they will uh, disrupt some level or some aspect of, of of confidentiality that a patient is entitled to so you establish a professional relationship a problem comes, especially with you. Maybe you've gone somewhere, especially with uh, you who are uh, men. You've seen someone so beautiful. Now you want to get uh, engaged into a relationship that goes beyond professional boundaries. You see, that one you shall have uh, uh, created a hostile environment. It's very hostile, medically speaking, because you shall have not, or you will not help this person sincerely and will not help them uh, 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 in the, with, with the mind of help, uh, uh, making them get better, but in, with the mind of getting what you want. <clears throat> so establishing a medical professional relationship is always very important. It's a principle that we have to work with, especially when looking at the family. The other thing that happens with uh, 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 establishing professional relationship is uh, you are not going there to maybe uh, elevate them financially, you see. It's, it's also part of the ethics in professional relationship. Uh, uh, you're not going there to take to them uh, 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 shopping or what or what. It's, it's, it's not part of that. As long as you, you have the standard protocol of operation on what or the goal. So maintaining a professional relationship is one of the basic principles that we have to work with when you're looking at the concept of the family, either in maintaining maternal or stewardship of maternal health and child health, and also the youth health. The other thing is guidance to the family. So help the family through provision of guidance to the family so that they identify their health needs and make plans. So maybe this is a family, the mother, how you identify this family is the mother came, or you have identified this youth, and the mother is coming from maybe a, 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 a background where they have a history of diabetes mellitus. Now, what you do is identify this family and what you need to uh, uh, do more is try getting the history, that family health history or family history, the whole of it, social uh, uh, health, surgical and the rest. So it's guidance to the family so that you Yes, so I was talking of guidance to the family. Here, you look at, you, you examine, you not only look at all, 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 only this mother or this uh, guy, but now you look at, are there some other complications? Are there some other diseases that this family is suffering from? Then collect information about the size, the occupation, the education, the religion, the custom tradition of the family, because this one, might positively or negatively influence the health of the members of the family. 
The other thing is identify the health problems of the family linked to guidance to the family, because you might realize that families who are illiterate, so you have to guide them on the basic steps and identify the health problems, what they need to, what they need to, 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 to do health wise. Provide need-based support to the family to improve their health status in this, uh, instead of routine services. So what we always say here is that do not, uh, uh, you are not there to uh, directly financially support the family, but if you're capable, you do it. What you can do that will be sustainable is you can link them up. There's always that aspect of linkage. Maybe you go to the key informants, uh, you're you, you, you within a community and you have a family that is less, for, uh, less fortunate and you recognize or you identify these families at the hospital level. So what you do, you get these key informants and after getting these key informants, what you, do, you link them up to supporting groups. So provide needed need-based support to the family to improve their health status instead of the routine services because you can realize one of, uh, of the key things that are making these families vulnerable is that they, they are financially uh, 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 down or they cannot afford that cost of healthcare. Uh, so you have to uh, make them at least improve their status through those linkages because you can, you can go there and and, 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 and have a one day visit and you leave them 500. You see 500 cannot sustain someone for two to three days. So it needs such kind of linkages if they will be receiving support from time to time. I believe we are all understanding. If, if you have a question, I'm always very free to get uh, your questions and feedbacks and, and responses. <clears throat> So individualized care, each member of the family must be given health care irrespective of sex, age, earning, uh, earning capacity and being head of the family or otherwise. So what we're, what we're discussing here is, we talked about looking at the client in his mother who is at risk. Uh, uh, let me talk of, of, of mothers who are at, let me take a condition. It might be new or it might not be new. There's a condition we call uh, 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 maybe uterine rupture, uterine rupture. It's when the uterus tears or, or, or tears and you start seeing blood oozing out for a pregnant woman or who is almost near term. So what happens is we look at this mother, not only her, because one of the risk factors for this is uh, a mother who has stayed for so long post 42 weeks of pregnancy. So we are looking at this mother, not only her, but we're also including, because that one can be a clinical case. It, can, it, it, is a, sorry, it is a clinical case, but we go far much beyond that to looking at how are the family, can they uh, 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 provide such kind of healthcare? Or are they, uh, are they loaded with information? Do they know this condition? Besides that, do they know what are the risk factors that can cause this? And what is their input towards managing this woman? I believe we are, we are all understanding the point. So it's, 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 it's all around and we are looking at the patient either from a clinical setting or from a community level, but we are focusing at the family. So coordination and care provided by different providers, care to the family uh, provided by different health agencies need to be coordinated and overlapping of services need to be avoided. So provide preventative services. This is maybe, let me explain it. You realize that Kenya, as at now, we are moving from curative services to preventative services. Now, this is what I mean. <clears throat> you see, it's, 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 it's basic, how many, I don't know, um, how many have ever been to an MCH setup, maternal and child health uh, uh, setup? Maybe you've been to uh, antenatal clinics. You've been there as a client or you've been there, you've taken someone. I want just to uh, draw a very basic lesson that you can learn so that I explain this point of preventative to curative. 
How many? Maybe let me see the chat box. Thread. I have been two. Oh, Lavin. Oh, uh, Lavin. Lavin. Oh, Lavin. You're going to receive the services. I uh, have been there during my assessment period. Oh, nice. No nutrition. Oh, nice, nice, nice. Nice, nice. Thank you. Uh -huh. You've been there uh, during your nutritional. Uh -huh. So you went as a, as, as you went, uh, yours was a higher level. Okay. I'm waiting. I have been there. Oh, Jacqueline. Jacqueline, have you been there as a client or as a, someone who, Esther, Esther also kindly make me know. Uh -huh. at, oh, nice. Oh, Leonida. Uh -huh. Oh, thank you. I've been there. Took someone. Okay, I work at the NC department. Thank you. Ah, now we are sharing the same thing. Okay, client and work there also. Jacqueline, oh, thank you so much. <clears throat> so, the whole basis of it is when you are moving from preventive or when you are moving from curative to preventative, is let me just draw that basic point at the ANC where we have mothers is the mother when she goes for those ANC clinics, there are always four comprehensive ones, but for uh, some kind of cases, the mother might need to go for more. But according to uh, uh, the guidelines, we have a four comprehensive for a normal mother or a normal pregnancy. But for cases where the mother has some conditions, maybe she is a, a non-hypertensive, she is diabetic, she can go for more. Now, when you go to the MCH, uh, 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 setup, what will happen is maybe you go for the second time or you go for the first time, there are those tests that are going to be done. One of the things that will be given are those uh, iron supplements. They're always called IPAS. They, they, they have a combination that combine iron and folic acid supplementation. So what that does, because women are always at women have lower hemoglobin levels because of the, the, the physiology that they experience monthly. So because of that, uh, what, the, what, what will happen is they are always given the iron and folic acid supplements. So this iron and folic acid supplements, number one thing, it helps in improving the hemoglobin content. We know hemoglobin carries oxygen. It's a, it's a basic knowledge from uh, high school. So it, that is what they are given. And they prevent maybe anemia during pregnancy. And maybe towards or, or, or at term, this mother might have, maybe she is a first-time mother. Uh, we call them prime gravida, a first-time mother. And maybe they cannot deliver normally. They have to go through a cesarean infection. So they have to be taken to theater. So when they are taken there, you realize that the mother's uh, hemoglobin levels are so low. So that is an area where we have to transfuse. <clears throat> so what happens is they are given these things are not only to help in improving hemoglobin level, but also to help in, in, in the baby because it helps the baby in formation and, 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 and also a lot of physiology, they may not go there. So we are moving from preventative uh, uh, sorry, uh, sorry, from curative, now a family comes in and they have an issue. So we're moving from that and we're focusing, focusing at the family such that when we have this family, when we take hold of this family, we can be able to help in a lot of things. We can be able to prevent some diseases that they are at risk of. Maybe if they were at risk because of uh, low financial status. Now we have provided that link up or that linkage. So what happens is their health status shall have improved and we shall have prevented maybe development of diseases like malnutrition, diseases like uh, a for children, marasmas, you see such kind of stuff. So health education is also very key and health education entails a lot because you have to tell this family, you take them from the unknown to known. You take them step by step, step by step. And that one is how uh, 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 the basic principles. 
that we, we, we are talking about. Now, <clears throat> let me bring some two concepts here as we go along. The concept, when you're looking also at the family, there are some two basic concepts that we can talk about. Because we talked of a family being a basic unit or a basic social unit. So one of the considerations that we have to, to take a, a, a keynote of is the social, uh, 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 sorry, is the, so, uh, 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 the cultural competence. So we have also to be very sensitive of the cultural setup because there are some communities maybe like, uh, 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 uh -huh. I don't want to be, I don't want to sound so discriminative. Let me just make it a general statement. There are some communities that will accept some of the medical practices and others won't. So we have to be culturally competent and sensitive. But that if we go and provide these services to a culture where they are not uh, uh, embraced, then acceptance and sustainability might be a problem. I believe you got that point. So congruent defines set of values and principles and demonstrate behaviors, attitudes, policies, and structures that enable them to work effectively cross-culturally. So we have to be culture sensitive and linguistic sensitive. So I talked about family-centered here and we are going to see how culture sensitiveness will come. Let me go to the linguistic competence out there because we, we cannot speak all the languages. I don't know, we have for two or for three. All the for two or the for three languages. So capacity to communicate effectively and convey information in a manner that is easily understood by the diverse audiences to include person of limited English proficiency, law literacy skills with disabilities. Let me make that point, that too much English simpler. What happens here is linguistic competence is you have, you're going to a community, you're going to a family that speaks uh, Borana or that speaks a language that you don't understand. So what happens? You have to make this message so simpler. Maybe you do not speak it. You have to get a translator and then this translator must make the message more simpler and until this family understands, because we have different classes of families. So we have maybe a class that understand English in terms of understanding of the language or in terms of uh, 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 the, uh, the, the relay of the information. Because you might speak in, maybe I might be speaking some jargon, maybe a doctor of uterine rapture, you don't understand. If I do not make it simpler, you will get out here from, you will get out of here or from this meeting empty. So I have to make it in a language that you understand it, even the most, uh, maybe uh, the, the, the low, lowly educated you must understand. So maybe you're going to talk about uh, uh, um, how the family can help in preventing increased cases of maternal uh, and child health, child mortality. Let me talk of that. So what are you going to introduce here? Maybe you're talking of uh, 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 increased ANC visits. I'm talking, I'm saying that one because maybe you understand antenatal clinic visit, what it means, maybe. But now I have to make it simpler. I have to go, even if it means talking in some different languages or telling this my interpreter to tell them such that they are all informed. So I have to go and tell them, maybe for example, I go to a family, I have, I find or I identify this woman who is pregnant, she's maybe 24, 24, 24 weeks, 24 weeks pregnant, that is roughly six months pregnant, I believe. Is it six months? Maybe someone can help me in the chat. 24 weeks is, is six months, is six months pregnant. Yeah. So I have to go, you see six months is so late, it's too late. Yes. Yes. I have to go to this woman or to this family, sorry, and tell them that it is necessary for a woman to go to uh, antenatal clinic or for clinics, the way we know them, from either with four to with six, uh, uh, the first 16 weeks because of one, two, three, 
four. I believe now you are getting uh, the linguistic competence. It's not only language, but also the relay of the information. So you have to take very good consideration. So those are the two aspects or the two considerations that we have to, 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 to be keen on when we are looking at the concept of the family. So let's talk about family-centered care. Family-centered care is one of the innovative ways Especially when you are handling, when, when people are talking, always talking about pediatrics. Pediatrics. Uh, Sheila. Yes. Uh, could you kindly mute your, your mic, please? Okay, thank you. So, family centered care. <clears throat> Here we are talking about. Family involvement, you see that when we are looking at the family, it's not something, it's, it's not a different concept, but it still revolves around the family. Because I started by saying, if, 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 if you are looking at this family, you have to check the love or you, sorry, you have, you have to be included. And then not only you included, the other thing that we also look at is the family involvement either, either for either at, at managing a certain person who has some illness, because we say everybody comes from a family. So a philosophy and approach to healthcare that places the patient and family at the center of institutional and professional focus. That when we are handling, maybe right now, uh, uh, God forbid, I, uh, I get sick. Now, when I go to the hospital, uh, 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 they do not only look at me, as, as a sick individual, as a sick me, but they look at where I'm from. Maybe I was admitted because of, of, of a bacterial infection, of, 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 uh, of, 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 of uh, a member infection, let's say like that. Yes. Mommy. Mommy. Uh, mommy, are you okay? You can mute your mic. You can mute your mic. And we all mute, please. We all mute. Can we all mute, please? Okay. Yeah, so I'm looking at 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 where maybe from the Amoeba infection or from uh this is the most contagious infection. Maybe from that Amoeba infection, yes. So because others also are at risk, so they not only look at me. And you see what happens is maybe our healthcare system has not succeeded because we are still looking, it's, it's a clinical setup where we are looking at the patient uh, 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 as, as, as the center of focus rather than the family. And you see the Western countries has really, uh, they have developed their healthcare system because they look at a patient or they look at the family as the center of focus. So when they start managing a patient, they start from the family. They, they narrow down or they come down until all the aspects of living are catered for. So patients and families are involved in all aspects of planning, implementation, evaluation of healthcare services. So it's, 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 it's total inclusion. It's, uh, 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 Everybody is involved in, in, in management or everybody is involved in interventions, in planning, in diagnosis. The family is involved. So involve patients and families in policies, programs, facility design, staff day -day interactions. Then facilitates collaborative relationships between and among consumers and the health providers. So you see, as, as, as an advocate, you also, because if the family is involved or when you want to look at the family, it lessen your involvement. You are going to see all some of the some, 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 some of the advantages. So we have family focused and family centered. Maybe the several terms are not going to, but I'll make a general summary at the end of it all so that we also uh, have time for questions. Uh, 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 uh. Questions and answers and additions and suggestions. 
So family centered uh, assures the health and well being of children and their families through a respectful family professional partnership. We talk from that one as part of as 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 part of uh, the principles, if you remember. So why family centered care? So one of them is lack of uh, uh, some families lack the basic information, the basic health information, and here. Or maybe the whole program uh, of this session is maternal child health. How can we improve it when you're looking at the family as the basic or as the center point? So maybe some families lack uh, uh, information. So family centered care means that involving them, we also teach them because I said part and one of the basic principles of family or the concept of family in the in, in 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 the stewardship of maintaining low maternal and child mortality or in maintaining uh, a, 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 a coherent society is education health education that is when you draw circles make health education the center people be taught because it will revolve because we are educating because we, we have realized that maybe we are not all informed about health and health information. Maybe besides besides COVID, the COVID is one that we all know, but not all of us are equipped with that information or with that uh, 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 ideas about the basic and the most. Uh, uh, essential health information that we can give to a pregnant woman or that we can give to a mother who has delivered to avoid ma uh, 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 infant mortality rates. The exclusion from decision making is why also family centered care is, is involved. Because most of the times, um, I, I can testify this, when we go to the clinical areas, we always look at the patient as the patient as the centerpiece. And many times we do not involve the parents in making decisions. So you see, there is somewhere where we might be going wrong. Maybe you're managing a diabetic patient or you're managing a, a, a hypertensive. You see, these are such kind of, of chronic or long-term diseases that are acquired and they have a genetic link. So we might be managing this, uh, maybe father, uh, a father or someone, but we have not even looked at how about the children? Are they predisposed to hypertension? So you see, when we are now looking at now, I believe we are now seeing the sense. We are now seeing how uh, we are now seeing. Uh -huh. Okay, we are now seeing how the family is important. Even if you're managing maybe a, a mother, you see, twin pregnancy is also genetically linked. So maybe you're managing a mother who has uh, 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 a mother who has uh, a <clears throat> twin pregnancy. Let me say, and you see, twin pregnancy also comes with risks. It's a blessing, but it also comes with a lot of risks. Now there's a, 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 a daughter of hers who is also pregnant, maybe like two or three weeks, uh, sorry, three or four weeks pregnant, and we have not even looked at her as well. You see. So what happens is we may be managing this mother, but we miss out the, 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 the daughter. We only realize when she comes as an individual. So when we manage all these people as a, as a holistic, it will also help in decision making and also some health uh, 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 protocols that will ensure a smooth the flow of, of events within the, the family. Of a treatment or an treatment when it comes to uh, 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 looking at the climate policies and procedures back of follow up benefits. So the benefits of family uh, 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 centered care is the families will benefit in terms of the health messages, in terms of the linkages, in terms of what, then the children will get that early exposure to, to, uh, 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 to proper management, you see, because now maybe it's a hypertensive, uh, 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 a diabetic family. Now the, child, the children will now be under watchdog. You keep on uh, checking, are, 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 are they uh, at risk? How about this? And one of the things that you'll also be doing, we talk of preventative medicine or preventative services, is that you will now start training them so that they do not be at risk or they are not predisposed. 
So the staff is reduced to work, uh, uh, maybe the staff, healthcare uh, profession, staff and physicians, sorry, and then organization, you see, we shall have reduced a lot, a lot, a lot. Yes. Uh -huh. So family sector, yeah, family sector, yeah, organization. Uh, do not worry about this. It's just basically about I'll, I'll share with maybe you. You go through the slides and whatever you need to read. It's it's, it's a lot of information. From the family is just a lot, and we cannot exhaust everything now. Let me uh, 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 go to uh, principles of family centered care. I'm only going to look at three or four, and then uh, the last thing, and then we finish. Any time shall have allowed. Right. So communication and information sharing are open and objective. So principles of family centered care. That communication, communication, communication and information sharing are open and objective. Everyone is included. It's an inclusive thing. Everyone is told this is the part to play, this is the part to play. That is how it's inclusive. Either from the family need to meet to even the staffs and the, the, the physicians and the rest. So encourage open, honest, honest communication between staff who reflect the cultural and ethnic experiences. So leave alone the literature, but it's, it's a, there's that common flow of information and it's open and objective. The family brings in what they want to be told or what they want to be done. And the family or, or the staff and the world or you as an activist, you also bring what you see best. But you see, amazingly, in, in, in one of the ethics, or, or uh, what do we call that? In, uh, in our hospital setup, the hospital, I do go to Mero Level 5 for my clinical rotation. What happens is the patient is always right. That is always the bottom line of everything. The patient or the client is always and will forever be right. But under some considerations, because if that was the rule, then most of us will uh, be happy, will not be in school now. So the patient is always right. The family will always be right because the burden uh, lies with them after all. The nurse or the, or the activist or the physician or you are only to advise them and give them counsel on the best option. I believe you're getting uh, 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 the point. So the other principle is participants mix decision together. I've talked about it and, and one of the rights is right to inform consent as, as, as a family. They have right to inform consent on whatever thing you're going to do with this mother or whatever thing you're going to do with this baby who is maybe ill or, 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 or something, or this person who is a drug addict or something, they have the right to inform consent and make decisions. That is a right that uh, arrests with them. So you cannot take away that right from them. So there is willingness to, uh, 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 sorry, there is willingness to negoti negotiate, there is willingness to negotiate and, and to solicit, uh, solicit information from them as well. So. Uh, <clears throat> so family centered care recommends that families are very diverse and will make different choices for their children. Now let me bring another concept, uh, just a moment. You can be typing your questions and responses as I make uh, also the I, I bring in something here because I want us to look at how to assess or how to engage a family because there, there are two concepts on how to engage a family. So I, I, let me bring that concept so that we, we see the concept of the family. Sorry. Uh, meanwhile, let me look at Facebook, what they are really talking about via Facebook. Um, just, a, just a minute. Let me just look at Facebook, what is there with us. Just a minute. I want to look at those who are joining us via Facebook. Just to look at uh, what are their discussions over. Keep you in a classic. Nine. 
So uh, somebody saying following. Uh, I want to see all the all the the messages. Uh -huh. Um, I'm just trying to look at some of the uh, some of the key questions. But I'm unable, I'm not listening. Uh, Jerry Waruguru following so far, so good. Thank you for your um, your response. Jackie Kirombe uh, following. Matthew Beer is following. Princess Ines following. Korir, Korir following. Elizabeth Nduta is also following. Uh, I'm seeing, I'm looking at the Facebook, please. Uh, uh, Okami Gobo Anulika Mary Cynthia following. I see, see people are following. Thank you for those who are joining us on Facebook. Um, I would like to ask those also joining on Facebook, please ensure you 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 also put in your questions over there so that we can always keep on counter checking on that and then we also respond to your questions. And to those on Zoom, those who are following us via Zoom. We give you this time now to ask questions. Um, I don't know if Katile shared uh, shared with you the attendance list, but I think um, if she doesn't share, then we are going to work on that so that we ensure that that we ensure that we we send you the the attendance list uh, before tomorrow, so that we send that attendance list before tomorrow. So at this juncture, I would like to really request anyone with a question. To raise his or her own hands so that we can give her uh, or him the chance to do that. So we'll, we'll work on the attendance. So um, we are sorry we didn't. Uh, I'm trying to look at if Katile did uh, work on attendance. Of, yeah, but um, I'm trying to look at the group forms if we had attendance sheets, sheet, but unfortunately we didn't work on one. So we are going to work on attendance sheet. Um, then before before tomorrow, we'll post it on the group so that those who are who attended this session will 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 will, uh, will be able to sign in, including those who are following us on Facebook. Just write your name. I uh, will take in that consideration and put you in the in, in the attendance sheet. Any questions so far? I believe I saw Irene don't raise her hand. Yes, Irene, Irene, continue. Hello. Yes. Do you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Yes, we are able to hear you. Okay, I'm asking. Mm -hmm. uh, there are several types of family. Yes. No, so I'm not aware or I'm not sure the family the about the family we are discussing right now. Because um, we have um, different types of family, so maybe we can elaborate. Okay. Yeah. Okay, okay, okay. Thank you, Thank you so much for that reminder. I am, I'm also seeing Rahab. Okay, there are people also raise their hands. Uh -huh. Irene and Jacqueline, they raise their hands. So, so is Jacqueline, you can go on with your question. The one, the first one is uh, the type of family that we're talking about. Okay. Yes, Jacqueline. Hello. Hello. Yes, yes, go on. Hello, Jacqueline. <laughs> Hello, okay. Hello. My question is Yes. 
seen many families. Hello, you are getting me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We are trying okay, to get you. Okay, since many families breaking. are ignorant about these health issues. Yes, yes. I'm saying. Uh huh. Hello. Yes, I can get you now. Hello, you are getting me. Yes, I'm getting you. I don't know if others are getting me as well. I can get you clearly. Oh, my net. Right. Um, yes. Okay, I'm saying. Yes. Since many families, since many families are ignorant about health. Yes. <laughs> Okay, I'm saying since many families are ignorant about healthcare. Oh, yes, yes. Let me yes. text. Let me text my question. Is as if you're not getting. Okay. I can okay, text okay. it in the chat okay, box. Okay, no problem. So Rahab Moon says, "Hi Nick, how do you handle families that hinder treatment for a patient or are in conflict with the patient's health decisions?" Okay, so I'll, as as she writes. Okay. So as she writes uh, uh, her question, let me respond to, sorry, um, I forgot the name, but you asked about the type of family that we're talking about. You see, I started by saying that we started by defining a family. And there are uh, several classification of a family. I admitted that one. And you see, when we are talking of a family, we are looking at a family composed of a, a, a father, a mother, and children. That is the kind of family that we are, we are looking at. It, it, it's it's the, the, uh, 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 the, the map, the road map, or the cold map that we are taking as we look, we, we navigate around the family. Because when, when, when we have specific health principles, for different kind of families, you see there are those that uh, cannot fit our standards as Kenyans because we have also a gay family. It, it, it's nationally or it's, sorry, it, it's internationally recognized. Now there's some things that you cannot do to a gay family. So when you're talking about family here, we are focusing on a new, let me say a nuclear family, a father, a mother, children as the center of focus because we have a lot of there is Kamuiste family, it, it, it exists. I said there are a lot of classification, 10 plus classification of families, and they have different definitions. There's the, the other one that you come and stay together, only related by adoption, but you have no biological, uh, uh, you have no common biological background, you see? So there are, there, there are things that we have talked about that to some extent, others might seem not to fit some other kind of families, but we're talking from a standpoint of a nuclear family. I don't know if I answered, sorry, I forgot your name. Just let me know if, 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 if I did answer your question. I don't know if I, I kindly let me, or I was, uh, Hello, can, can anyone, can anyone hear me? I'm not, I don't know. If... Yeah, we can oh, hear you. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Mm -hmm. You see, everyone was quiet. I thought I was alone. No, <laughs> we are here. <laughs> okay, okay. Oh, thank you so much, Irene. Thank you so much for kisses. Yes, yes. So we are looking at a nuclear farm because if we start looking at other types of families and making considerations, I told you families is huge. So you just pick a nuclear family, we have mother, father, children, and we take them as our clients. So let me go to this question. Rahab, Rahab, hi Nick, how do you handle families that hinder treatment for patients or are in conflict with patients' health decisions? I believe I talked of some two aspects of, uh, of, of, of key inclusion when we are talking about family health or the concept, the whole concept of the family. And number one, we talked of cultural competence and linguistic competence. 
Now, how do you handle such a case? You see, this thing is collaborative. And what we are always told uh, 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 with uh, uh, nursing students is maybe areas that practice uh, 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 medically prohibited or areas that still have medically prohibited practices. What you are told is try to lure them, you see? Try to tell them why whatever you want to do is so much important than their cultural setting. But that one does not disqualify their cultural standpoint. So it's until, because I said the patient has a right to refuse that medication or that kind of treatment or that kind of intervention, but you have seen or you know the benefits of it. Now it's upon you to employ your high sense of, of as they call diplomatic or what are they call, I don't know. But you, it's, it's, it's that time for you to employ such kind of persuasive power so that you can make them know why what you want to do is so much important than why they are refusing or their cultural or their social sector. So it, this is, it, 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 it might be so difficult uh, 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 to do, but if, 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 if you maintain or if you check that or if you build that good rapport with the patient or sorry, with the family, then I believe it will not be so difficult. There was a time I went to, we went for clinical diagnosis, no, sorry, community diagnosis. You see community diagnosis, you go to villages and you go look at the health problems and you go, and there are people who have very stunned responses without talking to them passionately, without talking to them very politely, they will never accept. So it, it, it rests with us that we have to learn these persuasive skills as a leader, as an activist, as, 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 as a mobilizer, so that at least we tell them the importance of what we want to do, how it's far much greater than their position. I don't know if I answered you, Raha. If I did, kindly let me know. Let me go now. If I did, kindly let me know so that I go to Jacqueline's question. Raha? Yes, you have. Thank you. Oh, okay, thank you so much. Thank you, well. Thank you for that response. Thank you. So Jacqueline asks, since many families are ignorant about healthcare, how do you bring them on board to create this awareness and to engage them on healthcare? It's a very nice question, and I believe it's linked to that of Raha, but let me give my input. Uh, one of the things that we said is hindering family or family involvement, we talked of lack of information. So you see this great need for sensitization. And one of the places, if you are, a, you are at a clinical or you're in a clinical setup, one of the places where you can reach uh, 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 a great number of families is, I, 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 maybe I've seen it, I don't know if, if it's scientifically true, but whatever I've seen uh, uh, from whatever I've gone to, is at the MCH. Because at the MCH or Madame uh, at the clinic, what we call it, at the clinic, we have the mother come with maybe the spouse and maybe the child, you see? So at this time, we can reach all of them. Maybe the other part that we can also reach them is at the maternity center, but few men will show up. Maybe also at the MCH center, few men will show up. Maybe part of African culture, though it's, it's not healthy men. But we can make or we can have sensitization campaigns, you see? And when we have them and we go to the level where we can reach them, you see, it, it will not be difficult for them to accept whatever we want to offer them. Just link to the question that I have posted. But if, if, if we have this sensitization, maybe we, those, those uh, uh, are less fortunate. Maybe for the first time it will be difficult. But to just go talk at, the, at their level, understand them. Family practicing female genital mutilation, you go at their level and understand their culture first. After that is when you try bringing your position and do not make it superior. I believe those are practices of, 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 of high level persuasive skills. 
So it's it's a lot of sensitization and it's it's good this group BBYI, you're here so that you help in doing this. You see, you help in channeling this information, making it a flow from maybe from you or from the experts down to the family level. The other thing also, because you realize that this a lot of, or, or most of the times nowadays, we, we, we focus so much on the clinical, uh, clinical management. Clinical management is where we manage the patient at the hospital and we forget the community management and that one can work a lot. So it's creating or doing a lot of sensitization so that maybe they're ignorant because they do not know. You never know. So what if we channel this information to them? Will the ignorance still remain? I believe not. So uh, that is the whole of the whole area where we can revolve around information, information, information. And if we have information channel, if we have information talked about, if we have family health talked about from, from maybe from family planning, maybe from from, from, from obstetrics health, maybe from more. We can we can really reach uh, a, a lot of people and we can engage them even in some clinical uh, uh, intervention. I don't know if I responded to Jacqueline's question. Can you let me know? Let me know, Jacqueline, if, if I did respond to you. Oh, thank you so much. Thank you. So do we have religion competence consideration in the family? For example, okay, okay I, I was um, hesitant to maybe to read that. I, I don't know. Maybe I may suffer some, some what, uh, uh, communication. Is it, is it the phrase of afraid? I might suffer hate speech, but let me just respond to such kind of religious competences. I believe religious, religious, cultural, and what are social competences that we talked about. Yes, it, it, it's, 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 a, it's a key issue, uh, but uh, you see, when it comes now to religion, it's, it's always an individual choice. Yes, a, 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 religion, a, a religious setup might give a decree so that you not use this, but it's also a, a, an individual response, sorry, an individual decision, sorry. Such that when you go and talk to this mom, maybe she's following it, uh, maybe there's a woman or there's a mother who doesn't do because of church restrictions or more. Now you go at her level and you ask her, why? Why did the church restrict it? And you see, it might be because of lack of information. Or it might be because the family is not uh, 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 enlightened. So we might have religious competence. Yes, it, it, it's part of it, cultural, social, and all competences. We can have them. And when we have them, we go far and beyond from just looking at this person and despising them and going away because the church has refused but is is convincing them you see so yes we have we can have religious competence how you learn skills on how to approach these people who because of religious restrictions cannot do one or two things so i i i, I that is how i how best i can answer maybe someone has a very a comprehensive response to Ruth's question. I don't know Ruth if, 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 if we are together, but if someone has a response, please post it so that we, we all learn together. Yes, Agatha, Agatha Tunui. Thank you. Yes. Okay. Uh, I have a question here. Societal beliefs assigns a, a clan as a family. Sorry? The societal beliefs or the society. Yes, yes, yes. Assigns yes. a clan as a family. Uh -huh. And as time goes by, uh, maybe the, the clan grows and at some point in life, we maybe we don't know each other as, a, as clan members. Mm -hmm. And two people from the same clan may meet and maybe love each other and decide to marry. Yes. And from the society norms, it is a taboo. Mm -hmm. 
Yes. But my question is, does it have any effects on maybe the genetics or maybe the, the generation that will be born from those two people from the same clan? Okay. <laughs> Okay, that is not too much genetics. Okay, let me now just respond to that. Yes. You see, it's true. That's why India is the leading country with a lot of uh, 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 genetic problems because they marry from the same clan. Now in Kenya, uh, 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 the leading group of people that has a lot of genetic problems are the couriers. These are data that was released, I, I believe, some two months ago because they marry within the same clan. Now, the genetic problems, one of them is uh, what we do call one of the most frequent. If the people are affected or if your family is affected and you get maybe, you don't know yourself, uh, 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 and you get maybe your, your, your cousin, your uncle and marry, is sickle cell anemia. Now, there are some very notable genetic consequences that can happen. And you see, when that one happens now, you know you need to go for genetic counseling. I, I don't know how it's done, but yes, there are some genetic consequences when we, in, we, we marry within our clan. Uh, even those two, you can just go and also do your research. India is the most leading, the whole world, with genetic complications and inherited genetic complications. And for, uh, 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 because of that intermarriage between members of the same family, because I might be having sickle cell or I might be having diabetes a little. You see, if I have it and my grandfather, um, sorry, my grandfather had it, um, meaning either my father has it or, or my mother has it. So, and my father, my father also gave birth to someone, uh, uh, to a brother or a brother to, a brother to my father, I called him my uncle. And then my uncle also gave birth to a daughter. The daughter gave birth, uh, gave birth to uh, 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 a daughter also, and I see the daughter and remarry, you see? So the father of the, my uncle was predisposed, and also my father was predisposed. So what we do, we are increasing the chances of even uh, a type two or, or, or increased risk of a lot of, 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 of uh, inherited genetic complications. So it's very true. I don't know if I answered you. Uh, yeah, thank you, thank you. Okay, okay, welcome. Okay. So let me finish with this one as, as I'm seeing it's almost, it's already eight, sorry. So benefits of family-centered care is improved patient and family outcomes, it decreases the cost, it the family and, and patient and family satisfaction. And maybe the, uh, um, sorry, then increased professional satisfaction because you as, as an activist, you as, 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 as a nutritionist, you shall have felt that the whole family is involved, you see? There's that aspect of satisfaction, you're satisfied, you, you, you're contented with the service that, 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 that you're offering uh, 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 as a nutritionist, as, as, as an activist, as, as, as a nurse, as a doctor. So uh, also the other thing is it will lower cost. So it leads to more effective use of because we are we'll be transiting from curative and we prevent the family from a lot of health issues and complications. So healthcare professionals, it's, it's a development of a strong alliance with families, it, it will help the family also learn more and get a lot of information. So one of the challenges is flies in the face of control of healthcare financing by third party. So you realize that most of these countries haven't developed such kind of approach like Kenya. We haven't developed family-centered approach. We are still in, at the clinical center. So because of the financing, you see, financing health, financing health, nurses are always crying day in, day out, salaries, salaries, doctors are striking all over. So you see, it, it, it becomes a problem. Then families and professionals are open at all about appropriate proceedings. So what happens here is about, about uh, 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 family might, the, the doctors may be like a uh, 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 which one blood transfusion. I know there is a group that is affected by that, but now it's blood transfusion. The patient has an HD of maybe three or two hemoglobin level of two. You see that one is it's, it's severe anemia. The patient might uh, might die soon, and we have people who do not believe in that. It's the only the only way to correct that. Such kind of an emergency is through blood transfusion, but the family cannot accept. So you see, they are at odds. They cannot accept. 
maybe there are uh, with the concept of evidence based practice definitions of family are particularly difficult because they are difficult because we haven't dwelled or we haven't uh, 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 de really defined and really give uh, we haven't given sense to family as the center of care the other thing uh, uh, Yes, so the other thing is sometimes it's at odds with regulations or even laws. So you realize that there are a lot that is uh, 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 involved. So let me add some two points here, or, or a point or two. When you look at uh, the family, you see we cannot just go and start saying that this family has a problem. There are those assessment methods. We have number one, the number one assessment method is looking at the family in a structural function. Uh, structural functional approach you look at how is the family structured who is the head of the family the father maybe the mother is the head of the family that is how we start assessing uh, yeah. the structural fun the structural uh, sorry the functional approach who does what within the family now if this person maybe this is the mother who cooks who does this 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 and this is eliminated how is the gap filled you see now, such kind of, because the mother can uh, be admitted because of uh, cesarean section, and we have small kids and the father cannot cook. You see, now there is a stress within the family. So that is how we start looking at it or assessing to know where we can start eating or start uh, tackling it. The other one is, is family systems. Family systems is we have, within the family, we can have a disciplinary system. We can have what system, talk of the systems that can, like the subsystems that can uh, occur within the family. Maybe we are talking of disciplinary systems. Now the father is admitted. Who takes the role? It's more or less the same as, 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 as functional role, but it looks at it at the level of system. Now who takes the role? How is it affected? Can we be able to help the family cope all around when this one is, 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 is affected? So. That is basically maybe the concept that the family is too big, it's too huge, that uh, we cannot exhaust everything. So maybe the concept at it, as, as it gives you a leeway into looking at managing these uh, uh, affected individuals in a holistic manner. So as activists, as, uh, as, as, as nutritionists, as youths, as, as people who love or who are passionate about health, there's a very strong position here that will motivate you, is that monitor, monitor changes made. Maybe the way you are, kindly try checking what have you, or what, 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 what different have you, uh, uh, have you, have you influenced people to, to, to embrace? Then how was the process? Evaluate the process. Was it so difficult? Was it so heartbreaking? Was it so, just evaluate how the thing went through and do not give up whether it was that breaking or something. Then measure the impact. That one person whom you reached, did it create something good? Even if it was not good at that time, are there some processes of it being completed? Then continue to advance practice. Do not give up whether it has given a negative feedback or what. Just, just continue. There is a day, there is a day and there is a time. And then celebrate and recognize success. And may the Lord bless you. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you so much for the organizers, Katili and uh, Olivia. Joshua, sorry. Thank you so much. And uh, hopefully you will be changed, you will embrace. Uh, uh, these changes or you'll embrace these uh, 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 things that you've talked about and look at someone not in the aspect of just seeing him but looking at their family because we all belong to families. Thank you so much. Thank you, Thank you so much, um, Nick Obiero. For today's conversation, I think um, I'm really, really impressed about what we are doing today. <clears throat> and uh, having today learning about the concept of family. And I think um, we have learned a lot today looking at how our family comprises. And I know that there's a lot of discussion when it comes to a family. I want to take this chance because most of us really know um, the, the seven sessions we have been discussing, we have been discussing family indirectly. And uh, a lot of things we have discussed rather today having the eighth session. 
I really want to appreciate the time that you all of us have always um, put for us. Um, very key um, things I will pass across. Number one, um, we are sorry today we didn't make an attendance list, but uh, we are going to make one. We are going to share it in the group. Um, for those who are joining us on Facebook, we are going to add you to the attendance list. Um, I know if you are part of our group, part of the WhatsApp group, we are going to share that link. Uh, probably tomorrow morning, we shall share the link. Sorry, we didn't make the link. I thought Katile made. Unfortunately, she left off due to some of the issues related to network. So we are going to make an attendance list and share it in the group. Then uh, we will, uh, then we'll request everyone to, to really ensure that you insert your, it's just your name and your email address. I think that is just, uh, we'll take us one minute to do that tomorrow. And then we are, as well, we are going to share the, the recordings uh, in the Google Classroom and the materials. And I hope uh, that Nick, 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 yes, 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 yes. I hope you shared the presentation to us, right? Let me share them. Let me share them. You can share it to us, to our email, um, so that we'll put it in the Google uh, Classroom, as well as you can also share in materials for the concept of family, so that you can as well put it in the Google Classroom. Okay. Um, any questions to the team? Any question? Uh, allow me to look at Facebook, uh, if there's anything uh, from Facebook before we wrap it up. Uh, allow me to look at the Facebook before we wrap it up. Let me just, just a minute, let me look at Facebook. What is there? Um, those in Facebook keeps on complaining that we are not looking at the uh, at, at, at their responses, but so I want to look at some of their responses. Um, so um, I'm not I'm not seeing any question raised out from those in Facebook. I'm not seeing any question they are raising out. Um, let me just try to look. Anjeri uh, Waruguru is saying, for children's welfare to be smooth, we need the cooperation of both the father and mother. And I think this is trying to strengthen the family systems. So it means we need to have a strengthening family system. Uh, somebody, Mary Cynthia Nulika, is saying, without cooperation of husband and wife, the children's health welfare are tend, tend to suffer. Therefore, there is need for a program that can assist family health insurance. Thank you for that um, comment. Uh, I think we are able to see what we need to call is uh, based on the family uh, health welfare, which will look at the focus of children. Uh, Mary Cynthia, you have a question in your Facebook. I don't know if you have really highlighted it. Now, Felix Agola is asking, under what circumstances can a healthcare provider ignore the needs of the client? Nick, I hope you have noted that question. Yes, yes, I'm getting under what circumstances? Under what circumstances can a healthcare provider ignore the needs of a client? Okay. Yes, so uh, that is the question I've seen there so far and which you need to respond to. Mm -hmm. Are you able uh, to respond to that? Yeah, let me try. If maybe the person who gets satisfied, we can also maybe put the full information to your email. But let me try responding to it. I don't know what health needs he's talking about, but uh, let me give let me respond to the scenario. You see, especially during labor. When a mother comes, or when a mother is is is, uh, is in labor, and I believe maybe most of us have seen, or most of us haven't seen. Now, when the head is out, it's a, 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 a scenario, and then the shoulders cannot come out. 
and the mother has been in this such kind of an instance for like two hours or, or if it was is an emergency and they cannot go back or they cannot be pushed back what happens if the head has to be cut of the baby because there is a principle where we say the mother's health first or the mother's safety first she can get another one we always look at the benefits yes we always look at benefits outweighing the risks because if a mother uh, needs a service uh, maybe like which one the mother is maybe a first time mother and she comes she's in labor and then what happens is she she doesn't want to deliver normally she doesn't want to go through the normal delivery she wants as yes, without no or without any other contraindication. You see, even though the patient is right, but at that time we can deny her the, the need. I don't know if I'm trying to 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 to, to drive something, because it's 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 always we look at the benefits are are the benefits more than the risk that we are taking because you can have some scenarios where all two options or the two options are medically proven and they are evidence-based but which one should you do first so under such circumstances we can deny when the mother knows or when the mother wants something or when 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 the when the patient wants something and according to our medical or according to our our, our nursing evaluation we see that the benefits or the risks are higher than the benefits at that time or at that point, it can be declined. But we have, or we have instances, I've experienced one where a patient totally refused. Now they are always allowed to have such kind of medical uh, 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 medical processes, but it is always under under very under very strict uh, 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 observance, such that there are things you have to sign. And it is always written against doctor's advice. So that is something that is also added onto it. So we, when, when, when we have where the patient writes or, 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 or the patient, you see also rights have limits. Yes, rights have limits. When we have the patient being denied or, or circumstances that can lead to ignorance is when we see the risks medically evaluated or uh, 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 evaluated medically are outweighing the benefits that the patient can get at that time. So I believe that is the time where the health needs can be ignored. But I believe if, if, if there is a health need that the patient wants, and it's also in accordance, it's, it's an evidence-based practice that we, we, we also advocate for, then I don't say, uh, uh, or I can never imagine being ignored. I don't know if the if, 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 if the person got the, 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 the response or if, if, if he is not contented, I can I can make a commitment to go and maybe do a, 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 a do the question and then send it. Thank you so much, Nick, for that response. Um, I think just to allude to that, number one is. Uh, there are certain circumstances that uh, uh, an healthcare worker may not look at the client needs. Number one is when the client is in danger. You know, when the client is in danger, it means you are not going to look at the needs of, of, of that patient because the client might be in danger and one of the dangers is death. So, and uh, from the scenario Nick is explaining, he's trying to explain that there are two scenarios. He's trying to give out a scenario of a mother in a, and an infant baby that is almost nearly being born. So at that scenario, always most of the medics, one of the key things they do, they save the mother and kill the child because the mother will survive and can still get pregnant afterwards. So that is, those are some of the key sums. But to all the participants, um, I want you to always note that some of these scenarios are well elaborated in our policy documents. 
and, uh, and also as well in the constitution of the Republic of Kenya. So you'll always realize that constitutionally, there are scenarios that are really, really given out mandate to ignore the needs of clients. And there are cases where circumstances where a third party, which include the medical superintendent can come in and chip in to give consent on behalf of that client. So we get a lab with these policies. I know there's health service, uh, there are policies on labor and specifically it always look at labor surgery operations. And most of the time they look at some of these operations and some of these things that undergo within the labor sector. Um, but when it, when it touches to the HIV, but then it, it has some of the clear guidelines as well, which really look at some of these key issues that we don't uh, neglect uh, the client needs. I think, I think that is very satisfactory. And if not satisfactory, we can still have uh, more discussion in the group. Um, Gabriel Odiambo is asking, any insight or enlightenment on family triangulation, if you know anything about it? So I think, uh, allow me, I will take to this response from uh, Gabriel and Jacqueline and Nick, so that then we end the, the conversations. So Jacqueline Oma is saying, I can respond. If the patient's need is putting the patient at risk, I think the nurse or doc can ignore. E.g., there was this lady who came to a nurse. If she can help her get drugs for abortion and the nurse refused since it was not right. I think, I think then that, that is also very true. And uh, Jacqueline, I agree with you. But then there is a clear procedure. Number one, we must know that there's a clear procedure. There's a clear guidelines of how should the doctors um, ignore a client needs and what should the doctor do? And how should the doctor also involve the client when, when doing this? The client may not consent to it, but how is the doctor involvement bringing out this? And, and, and then when you talk about, uh, from, from your example, issues on abortion, abortion are cross-cutting uh, controversial issues that are currently having a lot of discussion in the country. And people are thinking, how can we have a safe abortion? And how can we look at that? And post-abortion care and pre-abortion care so it's a controversial thing that people really talk about. But then if somebody asks for abortion, what happens? I think there's also a very clear guideline for, 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 for that and for how to change um, the abortion care service delivery and to have that, um, to really refuse to that. You don't just say no, but you, at least you, you try and find out why does this young girl really want to do abortion? Um, I think that one I'm not going to get into that um, into that discussion now, because I know we'll have we'll have so many discussions that will be touching on on some of these ethical issues, uh, and which today we have asked ourselves. You know, today we were talking about the concept of family, but in this question that we are asked, we are still going to see it in more of uh, of the discussions that we are going to have throughout the training session. So we can still keep on that on uh, on a parking lot. And I know we are going to have so many parts to really talk about this on a very key night note. Um, I think I've really alluded to that. And um, I really want to ask anyone who has anything uh, to give us, or who has anything who want to share to wrap it up for us, anybody. Uh, I will assume the silence means we are all good. We are all fine. I allow me to say that uh, thank you everyone for uh, attending this session today. Uh, and thank you for your indulgence. Thank you for keeping time. Thank you always for joining us. And we really say thank you and thank you and thank you once more. Um, the next session will be on Saturday. We are going to try so much to ensure that we have, we have our sessions being done on time. And that means we will be logging in five minutes to, to the session so that when the session is at 6 p.m., we are uh, the host, we log in at 5.50, 10 minutes prior so that we can work out on the technicality of uh, the Facebook Live and, and and the technicality of even preparing the attendance sheet so that when you come, as the session uh, goes on, we can always ensure that you register 
because some people leave off the, the meeting. We were at one point we were at 60. At this point, we are at 41. So we need to track um, the other the other 17 was left. Right now we are now 42. So that is some of the things we'll do. We'll try and make, make sure that we we do the the technical inch early. We test our devices early. Then we also ensure that we have a very good connectivity. Otherwise, thank you. Thank you everyone for joining today's session. Uh, allow me wish you a blessed night and a good night, everyone. For those who are cooking supper, cook your supper. And for those who are also eaters, eat your supper. For those joining us on Facebook, we appreciate your indulgence. We appreciate everything. Uh, Somebody is asking me, Link, I have really, really requested and I've really asked for your apologies. We didn't make an attendance sheet link. We are going to send it in the WhatsApp group by tomorrow morning. So I think that is well, well understood. Please uh, receive my apologies. We didn't make attendance link. So we are going to make it and send it to you tomorrow so that tomorrow you can put on your details. So we are not going to have timelines for it. What we are going to do is send it in the morning. Then by, by tomorrow, evening, that is by tomorrow, 8 p.m., everyone who attended this session, including those who are joining us on Facebook and you are with us in the WhatsApp group, everyone who attended this session shall have shall have registered his or her names on the attendance sheet. Without much further ado, allow me to officially close this meeting. Let's meet for the next session nine on Saturday. Blessed night and good night, everyone.